So let's talk about box on the field. You know, late in the year, early in the year, off season, it doesn't really matter. The box lacrosse skills need to be brought to your practices. And a lot of the drills that you're going to see, you might have done before, but there's ways to make them more box-esque. And there are really, really important fundamentals. The first one, the most important probably, guys, is natural side. I'm not sure there's anything more important than looking at the net, righties on the left, lefties on the right, getting your stick to the middle. I don't know if I've shown you guys, I definitely did a webinar and talked about the MLL stats, but it's, it is a massive difference in shooting percentage in over the course of 10,000 shots in major league lacrosse from shooting with your stick to the outside of the field versus shooting with your stick to the middle of the field. Your natural side allows you to dodge to the middle, cut to the middle, and always have your maximum angle. If you're going to be doing box in the field, you're going to be doing a lot of shooting. You're going to limit the poles. I use, I, I, you know what I did a ton of? I used a lot of schlong sticks. So I would let my long poles, I, I, I didn't want them using shorties all the time. Uh, you know, when I, I didn't mind it in the off season, but there was times in the preseason when we'd be indoors or something. And I would just go with sticks that were like up to their uh, numbers on their chest. So they were long enough that you could actually like, you know, V hold somebody, uh, but they're short enough that you could play positionless lacrosse and you wouldn't have to worry about ruining a drill or being overplayed too easily. Uh, the one more pass has got to be, something that you're constantly harping on, the across, particularly the across the crease pass. Uh, you've heard me talk a ton about this, but running your unevens with motions. That's two-on-ones with picking and flipping. That's three-on-twos with picking and cutting. That's four-on-three, same thing. You're going to work on your two-man games, pick slips and mirrors. You're going to be working on your off-ball, cutting, feeding, and cycling. Now, this is the skills set. and um, I broke them down. There's more, but you know what? This, is what, this list is a list that I would use. Uh, I can't stress enough the importance of quick sticks. It's something you need to do every day. But think about this, quick sticks in your shooting. How much do you just make the guys do quick sticks? I spent an entire fall at Mountain Vista High School two years ago, and we did nothing but quick sticks. Why? Because I was like, you know what? I want to clean it up. I want them to stop looking where they're shooting. You can't look where you shoot when you quick stick. You have to watch the ball. And I want them to learn how to be deceptive by leaning or twistering with no cradles. Clean it up. No cradles. You'd be amazed at how quickly kids learn how to shoot deceptively when you make them quick stick. Quick stick passes, obviously, on one mores, quick stick passes uh, in drills and two-man passing, shuttle, uh, shuffle shuffle quick stick, stuff like that. But how about this? Quick stick crank passes. Catch it in a crow hop, no cradle, crank it on to the next person. Um, how about, and so we already talked about the leaners and the twisters. So that's like really good stuff as far as quick sticks. And I'll tell you, you watch, we're gonna watch a bunch of box clips, you're gonna see that stuff. Crank passing, all right? Literally, we, we, you saw an example of that one for one drill, but whether you're on the run, strong hand or weak hand, or whether you're setting your feet but ripping passes at each other, drag passing, that's where you back pedal. And you got to learn how to drag when you play box. You need to learn how to do it for field two. It's an absolute must in all uneven situations and many two-man situations. Learning how to throw levers and BTBs, that's a little higher level, um, but – you know, as soon as my guys are ready for it, I'm doing it. And girls, too. Finishing. Quick sticks. The concept of reaching to the far side and twistering to the near side. you got to have that in your repertoire. It's not, it's not, it's not a question. It's, it's absolute statement. Must be. And then your face dodge finish. You've heard me talk about this. This is the, in my opinion, simplest, most intuitive way and most effective way to teach finishing. Your double... Your triple threat position, that's your wind up position. That's where you drag. That's where you shoot your screenshots from. And it's where you hitch multiple times. Your face dodge, spin move, face dodge, rollbacks. All of that stuff occurs in your triple threat position. And it happens a ton in box. The overlooked position is the double threat position. You've heard me talk about this. 
Honestly, guys, this might be – the double threat position just might be the most undertaught, important part of the game. Uh, people do teach it in the pers from the perspective of squaring up, but I don't think that the, they apply this concept to the degree it needs to be applied. Um, and I'm going to go through that. Your multi-hitch stuff, this is all of your fakes. Multi-hitch, drag and pump, look back fake, pump ahead fakes, backhand fakes. Behind the back fakes, faking is a massive part of box. Obviously, we've got our on-ball picking and our off-ball cutting and picking. So let's take a look at some highlights. This is the Coquitlam Adenac midget team from last year playing, playing uh, Maple Ridge. And you're just going to see a simple two-on-one, and you're going to see the faking. You're going to see the guys coming down with, this is, with speed. You know, one of the things you can do with your two-on-ones is come down from the midline and come down with speed, or you can play them tighter however you want. But this coming to the middle, uh, you can see they're, they're on their natural sides. You can see the fake and the pass coming across. What is more beautiful than coming across the front of the cage and twistering it back to the near side? What a play. Here's a four on three transitional situation. Look at the one time passes in the goal. Let's watch this one again. One time, fake, far, twist, near. Giving goes are such a huge part of box lacrosse. They all are looking for it. And in field lacrosse, I feel like people only look for it when we set up a play called opener, and it's a give-and-go play. The give-and-go is the greatest play in all of sports, and it's just a shame that our sport doesn't foster to the degree that it could. You've got a give-and-go right here. Now you've got backside picking and winding up and stepping up and finding a screenshot. Again, these kids are 15 years old. And when you start watching their skill set and the way they play, coming across, finishing to the far side, this is all about your dodging and your angles and your finishing, getting underneath your guy and coming to the middle. And then how about, oops, and then how, coming to the middle. And then how about this finish? Let's, have, let's look at what he does. Very similar. It's hard for me to see whether it was a true face dodge finish. He did, though, didn't he? He brought his stick across. Let's take a look at this a little bit more slowly. He's getting underneath, gets underneath his guy, and watch his stick come across and then back for the far side reach. So pretty. The more you watch box across, the more you're going to see these, these face dodge finishes. But, man, you got to practice this. And American kids just don't do this. They finish going behind the net. You know, how about this concept? Pretty novel, huh? Cut the middle, you know? I mean, the reason why it doesn't happen in field across as much as it happens in box, in fairness to us, is that we usually have a dodge, a follow, and a float. And if the float cut all the time, we'd have nobody else up here Bring in pairs. That's why in cues and pairs, all of a sudden, somebody else fills that spot. And with a four-man motion, you can get the cut the middle. In most of our three-man motions, you don't get the opportunity for cutting the middle. But in box across, they cycle back and cycle up. And you can see, I mean, there's probably no better opportunity in, in the sport than, than cutting the middle. Yo, know, how about that? You see this? Cut the middle, jam it in. It's a quick little blind behind the back pass. These guys are 15. Can't tell me that we don't want to be like practicing box concepts. Really nice picking angle, hitch, pop, fake, back, wind up, get under, draw and dump. Is that pretty or what? Look at the picking angle. Reason why this works so well, man, anytime you come and get a step on, on the man guarding you as the picker, it really puts a defense in a tough spot in their communication and it leaves for wide open slips. Uh, in this case, you can see just the way this kid, who is actually a Carolina commit, this kid number 18, um, and he's uh, 
really nice player, tough kid. And how, how great is this lacrosse? And you got backside action going on. It's so fun to watch. And you can't beat the sweaters. Pumps and drags. Here they are on the power play. Drag, pump, drag, pump, step in. Let's look at that again. Both guys did it. You guys should be doing this on your, on your man up. This is the equivalent of the top three guys in a 3-3. Three, three. Catch that thing, and when this guy gets it, whether he receives it from the low man or he receives it from the top center man, he wants to drag a little bit and fake. The fake will make his man go away for a second and then have to overplay. And then all of a sudden, the next drag is occurring, and he fakes. And you can see that this defender reacts subtly to it, and now he has to commit, and it buys more time for the shooter. Dragging and pumping, so important. And, you know, the amazing thing is, guys, is that, like, in Canada, they don't teach it. This is what's amazing. It's not that nobody knows what it is. It's not that nobody teaches it. I'm telling you this. The coaches growing up aren't telling these guys to drag it and pump and drag it and pump. They might say fake or something, but these kids, due to the environment, are learning how to play this way. And, man, I just, I just think it's so cool. Drag, step in, pick, fake, skip, drag. So – Pretty awesome. Watch this pass. Talk about quick sticks. Holy cow. How good are these guys? These are the two teams, the two best midget teams in, in British Columbia. Watch this play. The righties, up pick, slip. Take it to the rack. This guy's going to come up, and he's faking his up pick. Slips right to the net. He's wide open. The defense is out of position now because the man on the ball is anticipating that there's going to be a switch, so he overplays the top side a little bit. A little fake, gets a stick up in the air, and he gets underneath, and they score. Up pick, BTB pass. Drag, throwback, fake. Back and forth, fake, fake, wind up, face dodge, set your feet, wind up. Such great stuff. So how do we practice this? This is me, uh, North Carolina, with my daughter and a couple other girls, and we're doing our snake finishing drill. Face dodge over and finish. Face dodge over and either reach far side or twist or near side. Face dodge over, reach. Good. Oh, kick safe. Okay, you may have seen this drill before. This is a pretty cool drill, though. This is a face dodge. Uh, this is a, a twister around two nets, one net in front of the other net. And uh, if you take a look, we're just practicing this motion of our twister. And you can rep this out so quickly that you can get everybody to like 10 good twisters. All you need to do is tell the kids, twister it right, whoops, twister it right around the time that your eye, that the two pipes are matching, are, are matched up, you know, lined up with each other. When the two pipes line up, then twist it. Now, what I would do now, because I didn't know the face dodge finish technique at the time, is I would have them face dodge right about now, and then I'd have them reaching, and I'd still have them shooting by the twistering it by the time their, their eyes are matched up. But I'd face dodge over first. The reason why Canadians are such good shooters is they do this. I mean, I, I go up and I watch my son play in the summer, and they'll, they'll go out and shoot for 45 minutes as a team, and they just get so many reps, so many reps of their, of their snake shooting and all the different shooting drills that they do. And that's like they play, you know, when they get to the playoffs, they're playing like three games a week, and they're having shoot-arounds every shoot-around. I mean, I'm telling you, they shoot more than anybody. So the face dodge finish. Um, I was watching Northwest. This is Northwestern. I've been doing uh, consulting with them, and they're practicing their face dodge finish in a snake shooting drill. Now, they got too many people on the lines because they're just demoing something right now, 
but they're practicing face dodging over and going far side or face dodging over and then twistering it near side. So they're pretty much all going to the far side right here, but you can see how that motion works. And honestly, guys, it was watching this film and then thinking back to some other situations that made me realize that this really works. I was like, damn, that looks pretty darn smooth. Look at that. And so then I remembered seeing this clip, which you guys have probably seen, Chris Cloutier face dodging over, holding the goalie on the near pipe, and then being able to reach back to the far side. And I was like, you know what? I think this technique actually is money. And there's that face dodge over again. You can see from that angle how good it is. And here it is again. This is the same game. Finishes two times. Mark Matthews, face dodge over, throw it five hole as he fakes the far side. Maybe he went far side, actually. It's hard to tell. Face dodge over. Yeah, I can't tell whether he's five hole or not. Shane Jackson, face dodge over, come back near side. Hold him on the, hold him on the near pipe. This is sick. Watch him double clutch this face dodge finish to a twister. So, it is so cool. You gotta watch this one more time. Lyle Thompson. So, it does work better, gang. If you, you can see that he kind of brings it and then brings it back and then multiple times, he brings it back, back, back. And now he's selling far and the goalie has to jump off the pipe. So let's watch this one last time here. You can see him bring this, bring it forward and back, forward and back, forward, and then twist it. That's how you, the face dodge finish sets up your five hole, sets up your twister, sets up your reach. And I think it's truly the easiest way to teach finishing because the fact of the matter is, is the goalie cannot keep up with your reach. There's the perfect example of it right there. They can't keep up with your reach. Or they jump off the pipe and they open you up. Here's an example of they can't keep up with their reach. Watch. He didn't face dodge. He spun. But it's the same thing. His stick all of a sudden goes from this position, there, face dodge, protected position, to this. Can't keep up with it. You can't keep up with the reach. That's as simple as it gets. This one is such a cool version. The multiple back and forth, holding the goalie on the pipe. Such a thing of beauty. So how do you practice it? You simply feed your players. Let them come over, face dodge, and either reach or face dodge and twister. But I'll tell you this, you're never going to learn how to do it if you don't shoot on a goalie. You should have had that in one of my bullets. Because shooting on a goalie is the most important part of being able to finish or shoot. You can see I told the girls here, sometimes face dodge slowly, sometimes face dodge quickly, sometimes reach, sometimes twister. It just kind of depends on the feel. And then what's so cool about it is that it takes the thinking out of it. You just face dodge over. And as you come back, You'll feel it. Is the goalie coming off the pipe? Do I have my twister? Or is the goalie holding the pipe and do I have my reach? So here, we got a two-on-one drill coming in from the top. Fake, flip, fake, flip, and they come in with speed. Now, sometimes the Canadians like to come in with their two-on-ones with speed most of the time because they really like to go fast in those two-on-one situations. Here, we're not really going all that hard, but can you imagine how great it would be to like be flying in on your two-on-ones? Obviously, you probably you guys all do this, but this is one of the best places to be working on. Your box in the field is in a three-on-two drill, pass down, pick down, pass down, pick away, but working on box in the field, thinking about your angles, Thinking about your double threat. There's the double threat, fakes. And working on all of your one mores and your finishes. Three on two, all of the West Janney drills. Three on two, Claremont, give and go. Three on two, give and go. These guys are Canadian, so they're really overplaying their, 
their, their natural side. They're only, they're only going to do a give and go to their same side, to their natural side. Oh, how nice was that, that come around right there? Four on three nations. Set the pick. It's sort of a two on two ball side. And you can see how the picker's open. I'm going to see another example of it. This is a four on three pass down, pick down ball side. Cut the middle and cycle back side. Sorry for the, for the uh, skipping there. Here we go. Pass down, pick down ball side. Backside did not cut the middle and cycle. There it goes. There's the cut. They should have cut a little bit earlier. Let's take a look at it a little, some Americans doing it. Pass down, pick down ball side. Fight through the pick. Nations look. One of the best drills going, four on three, pass down, pick down, ball side, cut the middle and cycle, back side, fight through the picks. You can switch to if you want. I like to keep it real on, on the fight throughs. Four on three, fast passing. We talked about quick sticks and crank passing. You know, these guys are moving the ball without cradling. And to be able to do this effectively is incredibly important. And, and honestly, guys, is, is there – is there anything more important than being able to move the ball fast? Probably not. Four on four, Claremont. This is a, a, a drill that we all know, a lot of us have heard of. It's a two to three second rule with the ball and the give and go. He held on to it a little bit longer there, didn't he? Give and go. Move it. And why is it so important? Man, I don't think these guys are running Claremont. This must be the wrong clip. This must be straight up four on four. But they do kind of they do kind of move nicely, better kind of better than how our guys do. So Claremont, two to three second roll with the ball, and a give and go. This is one of the best drills going here, guys. This is just where you have a feeder over here on the lefty side, and you're going to have a um, an up pick, a cut, and then the picker is going to cut. And it's very hard to guard. It really opens up your feeding, your cutting, and your finishing. And it's so great. Watch the picker receive the ball right there. Another rep here. Ball goes over the other side. Here comes the up pick. And now we cut the middle. And they try to get a shot off. I don't know if you do this drill much, but I'll tell you what. It is worthwhile because from a feeder's perspective, it teaches how to jam a feed in. From a catching the ball perspective, from a slipping perspective, did you see that? Let's look at this one one more time. We got the, we got the pick here. Cutter cuts top side, causes the switch, and look at that cut, that roll man coming down. So pretty. Three on three plus a feeder. So let's take a look at this. So you've got one, two, three on offense. You've got a feeder over here, and these guys can play three on three with the ball, or they can throw it to the feeder and cut. So they can do pass down, pick down. They can do nations on this side. In this case, they're doing a look called a rattler. Watch this first look here. You're going to see a pass down, and you're going to see a cut, an off the ball cut where he's going off of a seal. He can go run on either side of it, he's going to run his man into this seal. And this is one of the classic entry plays that all box teams do. And just think about how much IQ that teaches. And how nice is that? Now they throw it over to the feeder, and now they're going to be picking off the ball and looking for cuts. Cut the middle, cycle, defense has to switch, back to the ball side, pick on the ball, dump down, move it over to the feet, skip it to the feeder. Now here comes another up pick, pick and roll. So you can see how this kind of works. And I'll tell you guys, um, this is a really fun drill to run. And you may not run this offense with a three-man side, but I'll tell you this, there's, not, there's nothing better for IQ than this drill because there's so much movement. And, and in the end, you get tons of reps. Oh, little street box, pump and drag. Oh, the old guy with the twister got the goalie stick up in the air. How about this? Andrew Hillgardner sent me this today. This is McDonough practicing on a little box on the field. This is today. He was like, hey, Jim, check out us playing a little three-by-three three at practice today. 
So I had to stick it in here. I'm pretty sure this this is Deaver Class right here, plays for the uh, to score did our did our uh, plays for the Atlanta Blaze and did our uh, shooting talk last week. Pretty sure he's a lefty. It looks like a black helmet, Blaze helmet there. But in any case, um, you know this is how you do it. It's three on twos. It's nonstop drags and picks, and fakes. Okay, we know that our five on four stuff is really good to do. This is how you can practice your man up, man down, and practice your you know, all the defense, but all of the skip passes and the drags and the movements, you know, it's just all beautiful. You can go with a crease man in a box, or you can go with a 3-3 free, free look out top with no crease. And we're working on all, all of our fakes, all of our passes, you name it. We're doing everything. The last thing I want to talk about is the double threat position. So let's watch. In my opinion, this is the, the best box lacrosse player in junior lacrosse, and he's probably top five, if not top ten in the world. He's 20 years old. His name is Austin Stats. Let's watch the clips and watch him use his double threat position. His double threat position is a dodging posture. He's selling dodge. He's making defenders back off of him. And when he's in this position – He's such a threat that it opens up his abilities. He's looking to feed. He's looking at the defense. He'll zip it across the floor. But when he gets it back, he'll jump right back into his double threat position and wait and wait and wait and then dodge and look and make his passes. This position allow, backs his man off while he's waiting for this pick. And then he steps in, and now he's able to, like, fake and make the defense late. He manipulates the entire defense. Watch another example. Double threat. Waiting. Looking. How about this? This is a discovery. Personal discovery. When you go from double threat. When you go from a double threat position to a triple threat, you draw sticks, and it becomes incredibly easy to face dodge people. So you're seeing here, there's a double threat, he's reading the pick, the switch comes over, he gets in immediately into his triple threat, and then he sets himself up for his wind up. For some reason, when you go from double threat to triple threat, it makes the defense jump. He, he goes back and forth there. See that? Double threat, triple, double, triple, and then snaps the feet over. And that's uh, Tahoka Nancy Coke, in case you didn't know, number 66. Second best player on this team, same age. Austin Stats is a better box player than Tahoka. At least he was last year. Here's an example, double threat to triple. See, everyone jumps around, and you can make people overplay you. Check that out. Watch how – player sorry watch how the player's in the double threat position and then when he goes to there look at the sticks go up and then this thing and then he goes back to a double threat and then goes back to a triple threat again and they just overplay him for the easy little face dodge and little inside feed okay so you got questions on that feel free but i think this box on the field piece is something that needs to be done really, um, you know, if not every day, multiple times per week. All right?